Welcome, and thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Sitecore Water Cooler, the casual conversation podcast dedic- dedicated to covering all things related to Sitecore, including product updates, full site builds, suggestions and insights, getting the most out of your Sitecore investment, and more. I'm your host, John Price, Sitecore Practice Director and MVP at AmericanEagle.com. Today's episode is a special one, both because of the topic, but especially the guests we have in store for you today. One of, one of the pivotal pieces of success for a software company today is the community in which dedicates itself to the success of implementations and advancement. It would be tough to argue that Sitecore's community is second to no one with the individuals that do just this day in and day out. Sitecore makes special recognition to individuals in this community that dedicate themselves to just this. I myself have, have been recognized as a four-time Sitecore MVP, and I wouldn't be here without the direct support from many individuals from the Sitecore community. I'm very excited for today's episode as I am joined at the water cooler by Tomas Varga from Sitecore, who leads the Sitecore MVP program. Tomas himself was previously a CTO of a Sitecore partner and a Sitecore MVP from 2010 till 2016 when he joined Sitecore. As a member of the Sitecore technical marketing team, he is managing the community relations, including events, webinars, supporting user groups, and he is leading the Sitecore MVP program. Tomas, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you on here, Tomas. So I think maybe to kick us off today, um, maybe just in a bit more detail, in your own words, you know, what is the Sitecore MVP program? So as you mentioned, the Sitecore community is really big and uh, people are contributing, uh, sharing their knowledge and experience uh, with others in the community. And those uh, who organize user groups, speak at events, um, doing uh, blog posts, creating videos or podcasts, uh, in, in any way contributing to the community, we would like to award year by year. So this is um, the start of the MVP program because we select individuals who contribute the most. And as soon as they are selected, they enter into the program, uh, but the program consists much more than just the award. So it has um, uh, exclusive webinars under NDA. Uh, it has um, uh, other benefits like um, um, you know, joining the MVP summit after symposium, one and a half days complimentary MVP summit where they can meet uh, the Sitecore executives and the product team, but also discounts at different events like the user group conference or symposium, uh, also local events when, uh, when the word is in a shape where we can meet locally. We try to do local events and, uh, and also we organize feedback sessions uh, with the MVP. So we are looking for the feedback on something what we released or something what we are planning to be released. They get uh, early access to releases. So a couple of months before a new platform release goes out, we share it with the MVPs. Or uh, if we have something uh, like the, the beta uh, training and exams, we share with the MVPs and looking for their feedback. So they have a chance to, to have it before anyone else. And also, uh, they can they can provide feedback and help the program that way. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think obviously, the community social evangelization aspects are incredibly important to Sitecore. But I think you also touched on a really interesting point for some that may not know, and that MVPs do get early access to software updates and things like that to provide early feedback. So even for product development, the MVP community is definitely a crucial piece of this. So great overview there, Tomas. Um, I think we've already kind of hit on it, but you know, from a Sitecore perspective. Why is the MVP program so important to the success of Sitecore as a leading software company? You know, again, because we do have this big community and we would like to award people who are who are doing the most in the community on, on one side. And, and also we would like to give back. And uh, so those, again, those individuals uh, receive lots of benefits. Uh, I didn't mention earlier the, the, the MVP licenses. So they get licenses to, to for their own personal use. Uh, for for the Sitecore platform, for TDS and Resolve, and also get access to Content Hub and other um, services what we offer. Yeah. So we, we we really would like to give back to the community and, and and really make sure that this conversation is going on. And those who are uh, awarded, they they really feel VIP. They know you know they are not just doing it for the sake of the community, which is I think really important motivation at the first hand, but also they get back from Sitecore. Yeah, fantastic. I think the key differentiator there, especially that makes Sitecore very unique in that with giving the MVP licenses and, the, and, and that early access specifically, 
individuals around the community have an opportunity to figure out how things should be built to best practices. And then again, I think the knowledge sharing in the psycho community is also especially important, where it's not just agency by agency or partner by partner. It's really a community sharing on how the best to be able to do something and sharing that kind of knowledge and insight. So definitely, I think an incredibly important aspect of kind of the community contributions. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really great to see that, you know, on the on the community level, um, you know, company names or partner names really disappear. They don't really care who the other is working for. If it's a competitor or a customer or someone else, they, they're really happy to help. And I think that's that's something that I, I've never seen before that uh, on this level, these uh, people really sometimes maybe it sounds silly to say, but really they, they form a family or it's a, it's a it's a much bigger bond than, than anything else. And, and especially when we are able to get together, having those four or 500 people, you know, in the same room at the, the user group conference, I think that vibe and, and that energy, uh, what they pour into the, the community and, you know, just uh, for the sake of love of the pot platform, it's, it's mind blowing. Yeah, especially when looking at other, even other software companies, I mean, Sycor, is obviously a leader in the DXP space. I mean, just looking at the Slack channel at Sitecore, there's thousands of individuals that are kind of at the ready to help even answer a simple question, which is extremely unique. That's an extremely huge value to you know pretty much anyone that's in the Sitecore ecosystem. So really good points there, Tomas. You know, in uh, for example, regarding Slack, as you mentioned that there are about 8,000 people and really helping each other. And when I talk to MVPs, they, they also tell me that, you know, besides they know quite some things about the platform, but they see a question there. And if they don't know the answer, they are really motivated to learn themselves to be able to help. So this way is also helping them to learn and, and be more uh, day by day. So it's not just giving, but it's also an opportunity for them to, to learn also for, from each other, but also from the questions. Absolutely. It's definitely it's definitely an, an aspect where you can definitely give a little, but also receive a, a little as well as far as that information. So I, that's that's a, that's a really good point. You know, in the Sitecore community is no is in no doubt grown year over year. Sitecore has gotten a larger footprint just across you know, as far as reach, as far as number of customers, number of users actually utilizing the platform. You know, and I think the interesting thing is, I'm interested to get your perspective, you know, the number of MVPs awarded has actually dropped a bit over the number of years. It's become more exclusive, which is not, you know, which is definitely not necessarily a bad thing. So, you know, in 2021, there were 285 MVPs, and now we're at about 236. You know, from your perspective, you know, is there any reason for the, for the actual drop? I would say mainly two reasons I see there. One of them is unfortunately outside of uh, Sitecore scope is, uh, you know, the state of the world where people are doing everything uh, online, doing everything in their, I don't know, bedroom or kitchen, and they, they don't want to, you know, leave their computer open after they finish the, their eight or 10 hours shift. So they, they really want to escape uh, from the computer. So they are contributing a little bit less. It doesn't mean like it's significantly less, but like the number of people who are contributing may be less and, and also the amount might be the same, but less people contributing the same amount. That's really outside outside Sitecore. On the other hand, which is a tricky situation for us to solve, for example, if you look at the Stack Exchange, on Stack Exchange, we have nearly 10,000 questions over the last five years. And, uh, and really like, every possible question what you can ask or about Sitecore, it, it was already asked. So previously we had like more than 10 questions a day and people were really active and answering them and every question had multiple answers. But recently, you know, if you, if you, if you are focusing on, on the platform side, really everything is nearly already asked. So, you know, many, many questions are just, more duplicates because we, it was already discussed on, on site or stack exchange. So it's quite hard to come up with, with something new. And of course, you know, the, 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 the new composable products are coming and we do have more contributors uh, starting to ask questions on our, on our new um, composable products, but that's a little bit slower to pick up mainly because the, uh, the, the companies with uh, Sitecore acquired, uh, haven't had that big of a community. So for them, uh, being being the, the product uh, implementer and also the, uh, 
I mean, the uh, product vendor and the product implementer in one company, they, they haven't had that community around them. But I think that's that's changing now. So if you look at the user group conference uh, agenda, 70% is about um, the composable stack what we what we offer. So I think it's it's changing, and the existing community is picking that up. And also uh, the the previous uh, you know customers and, and and developers of the composable stack, or you know the companies from Box Server Order Cloud and and so on, you know they are joining the community slowly. So I think it will pick up. So the number of uh, contributors really dropped in a sense that we we, we would like to keep maintain the the level and the value for the MVP program. So it was not something like it's not it's it, it's not a sales game. So we don't have to grow quarter by quarter or year by year. We really want to reward everyone who is contributing, and we don't want to reward those who who are not uh, contributing as much as uh, we we would expect really good insight on the stack exchange piece i think this is going to lead into a topic i have for a little later is with all these with the psychor stack growing and with these acquisitions it is going to provide individuals in the community much more opportunity to contribute to figure things out because with order cloud personalized cdp psychor send discover these are all aspects that are going to need to work together flawlessly and the community is going to be at the forefront of helping figure that out and creating documentation, answering questions, and even videos. So I think, I definitely think, I, I you know, to your point, the questions have dried up. But with this new, with all these new composable pieces, there, I think the opportunity has never been greater for someone in the community to contribute this year and going on. So definitely, definitely some exciting things there. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and on that note, which kind of leads me into the next thing I would, I would like your insight on, Tomas, is, you know, some of the best advice I have heard, I think it was actually directly from you a few years ago, is that in the community, you know, is don't focus on becoming an MVP, but becoming active and providing value to the community itself. So with, with some of these topics we already talked about, is there any other type of advice you would give those uh, to maybe help them stand out on their submissions for next year in 2023? You know, really, my my advice is is more on uh, do what you what you like to do. You know, if someone is blogging and you you hate blogging, you shouldn't do blogging. If you if you if you have something specific way to contribute to the community, it could be anything really. Like if it uh, provides value to the community and you like some specific thing do it if nobody did before it doesn't mean that it's not valuable maybe just nobody thought about that so you know we we used to have only one podcast on sidecore now there are multiple ones even one in arabic and, and so on so i think podcast is is coming up someone like doing podcasts some people don't so do what you really want and and, and contribute for the sake of helping the community and i think you know it can be in, in any way and, and and shape it's uh it's, there is no one way of becoming an MVP. Any any way is valid, which is uh, the, the results, uh, you know, um, giving to the community. Yep, R really good advice there. I think even from my perspective, the advice I've given our own team members or others in that mentor mentoree program, which I'm going to ask you about in a second, is focus on something that hasn't been solved for yet, or focus on a problem, and then provide value there, and then center your contributions around solving that. You know that one topic or even multiple topics. So you got to get started somewhere. I think it's the key message there. Pick an area, focus on it, and then ex expand upon it. So really good advice there, Tomas. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's 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 great to see Sitecore and yourself and the, the technical marketing team expand upon, you know, helping those that are MVPs, but also those that are interested in becoming MVPs. So it was recently announced that Sitecore the MVP programs were um, going to be coming out with a mentor and mentoree program, which has basically just been released. It's a fantastic idea. But what, what more can you tell us about the purpose of this program and maybe just some more details centered around it? Actually, maybe it also goes back to the, the previous question, how we see that the number of uh, MVPs are dropping. And uh, I think this is just a theory. Of course, we, we don't, I don't really have any numbers to back this up, but like we do have people in, in, in the MVP program who are there for 14, uh, you know, or more than 10 years. There are more than 10 people or 20 people, more than 10 years in the program. And we, we see these old names, let's call them old names there. And, you know, I think the younger generation is might, you know, not order some, someone who is starting with Sidecore just right now. They don't really know how to, 
you know, live up to that, that, you know, someone is already 10 years MVP and like, you know, they might be afraid to how to start, you know, dealing with the community and, and, and so on. So uh, I would say that, uh, you know, helping those who are MVPs just to, to start to kick off to contribute to the community and, 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 and kind of hold their hands with their first contribution, introduce them to the community, introduce them on different channels on Slack, introduce them on the community portal and, and, and so on. I think that helps everyone to, to feel much more welcoming. And if more people are feel more welcoming, they might, you know, uh, give on and, 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 hold hands for others next year and so on. So we really would like to, to have the next generation of MVPs by, by this mentor program. And, you know, we, the goal shouldn't be really to, to have more MVPs. The goal is always to have more people in the community who is contributing and helping each other. But of course, mostly if you do that, you will become an MVP eventually. Yeah, it's, this is all really, really positive for the community. And I actually signed up to be a mentor of this MVP community. So I actually got paired up with an individual in India and we're actually touching base for the first time here next week. Super excited. It's a, this is also a great way to network and learn new things as well, right? It's a, it's a, it's a shared relationship in this type of mentor mentoree program. So I'm definitely very excited to kind of help onboard someone new to, to the community. So um, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great addition by you guys. It's really, it's really um, forward thinking as well. To get more and more people involved, so um, that's great to hear. Thank you. And and actually, you know, one of the requirements in the uh, in in the MVP application to have an invitation from a Sitecore employee or an existing MVP, and those who work with a with a mentor for a year, you know, they will have this connection and. Most probably, if they follow the mentor's advices, uh, it won't be a question if they will invite them to the application process. So helping with the application process, I think it's also um, um, something which is a goal for us to, uh, that people don't have uh, the kind of excuse, I, I couldn't apply because I wasn't invited. So if you know someone in the community and if you do what agreed to be done, then uh, in this case, you you will be invited and you will be able to apply. Great. So f final topic of today, we've already discussed it a little bit. So um, again, the, the, what's going on with Sitecore is extremely exciting um, with the way the product stack is um, being updated it's in the forward thinking from Sitecore. Um, as far as the MVP program specifically, though, do you, do you see any specific impact to the MVP program with Sitecore's new acquisitions and this composable platform approach? Is there anything that you can maybe share with us? Um, you know, it, it's definitely different for us. In For example, the early access program, because with the platform releases, we, we have like a, the internal deadline, we have the internal build ready, and we can give that to the MVPs. And usually that's about two months before the, the public release. But for example, the in the SaaS world, you know, there is a release every day, or there is a, a major thing uh, every every month. But it's not something that we can provide easily to the MVPs because it's you know it's a continuous um, deployment and continuous integration. So it's just it's it's there every day. So if you use the platform, you're always on the latest version. So this is a kind of challenge for us, how we can, for example, give early access to the MVPs if, if something SaaS and something is continuously on the latest version. So that's that's something what we also have to figure out and, and find ways to, to make sure that the MVPs uh, can learn about those products and, and, uh, and, and, and uh, really have access to that. But other than that, I think it's an opportunity for us to, to open mostly for the uh, for the whole community to open to to JavaScript developers in terms of you know or the cloud or or, or box server for the others really it's something traditionally Sitecore uh, was dealing with .NET developers and now I think it's an, a new way to to include more people in the community in the, from the JavaScript development world and so that's that's the definitely and an, an, um, a way that what we want to include, and we we, we have Thomas Desmond, who is a, a JavaScript evangelist on the technical marketing team, specifically focusing on the JavaScript community. So I think that's a, that's a kind of uh, headache and also an opportunity for us how to how to deal with that. But I think we we are on the right path, but it's not as quick as we wished to a couple of years ago. But it's 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 still a continuous way to to uh, have more 
growing the community and also have more MVPs from from that uh, perspective. Yeah, that, that's a really good point in that historically Sitecore has been more backend .NET and you know a, a decent amount of prerequisite knowledge of the platform itself. Really good point saying you know, with these technologies of with the headless development now with Order Cloud even specifically, um, it definitely opens up the um, the talent pool especially for just kind of getting in on the ground floor. So re really good insights there. Definitely definitely gives people a much uh, more streamlined way even just to kind of start contributing. So that's a really good point there, Tomas. And then on the, on the SaaS side, I actually hadn't thought about that and getting you know, how do you guys going to get people early access to SaaS platform. We'll stay tuned on that. That's going to be interesting. But I'm sure everyone's chomping at the bit to get early access to some of these new releases. So we'll stay tuned. Yep. Absolutely. We, we try to do our best to, to get it as soon as possible. For sure. Great. Well, Tomas, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with myself today um, about the Cycro MVP program. Your reputation in the community speaks for itself. I'm sure the listeners had a great time hearing your insights today. Thanks for swinging by the Cycro water cooler, and we hope to have you on again soon. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's my pleasure to be here and talk about the MVP program. Thanks again to Thomas Varga from Sitecore for joining us today on the Sitecore Water Cooler Podcast, a casual conversation between colleagues and peers centered around all things Sitecore. I'm your host, John Price, and until the next time we meet at the Water Cooler, be sure to subscribe to the Sitecore Water Cooler Podcast today, wherever you find your podcast. This episode is brought to you by AmericanEagle.com Studios, with special thanks to executive producers Renee Nelson, Julia Klepich, and Demita Menezes.